can't believe that. I can't believe that. Football, but hell. Welcome back to FPL Bloody Hell and it is a bloody frustrating game week for FPL managers everywhere. Just red flags uh, doing decent so far coming in from almost 2 million to I think just about 100k but I potentially have 6 players who aren't available. I mean I have Lascelles who pretty much won't play, Taylor won't play. Uh, I'm sure a lot of managers have these confusions. Some of you made your moves early last week, got your city players in. Good job. You probably can avoid taking big hits over here. Uh, so for the ones who are in my position, hopefully you get some help from this episode. Um, we'll obviously discuss captaincy as well, what I think we should do for transfers and why I don't think it's a good game week to wildcard. I mean, it's not like a wildcard will not succeed. It's not the absolute worst, but we don't have the information and I'm sure you've heard this from a lot of other content creators as well, but that's what I feel too. We don't have the information yet and I think holding out will potentially prove more beneficial over the next couple of game weeks once we know the blank game week schedule, right? Uh, quickly reviewing what happened in game week 20 when things were great and there were no red flags apart from knowing just Salah and so on were on their way out. 96 points, great rank gain, Ariola delivered finally not on the bench, defense failed but uh, Wang, Son, Salah, Captain, Palmer, Golden over there, right? Saka and Watkins. Great team over there. Looking at this, I was looking at balancing out, taking out just Son, uh, taking out Salah next week. And then I think what followed was absolute pandemonium, right? I think in the end, Salah, Captain, people called it a little lucky. I don't think it was lucky looking at the way they just played, right? I feel you probably unlucky in that case. Yes, that he could have probably even got a hat-trick. Uh, but yeah, the ones who went Palmer captain, congratulations again, great call. Uh, sometimes those differential moves do help you going ahead in rank when it's so tight, right? Especially this season. Well, this is what it was in game week uh, 20. Now quickly, let's see what my team looks like for 21 and why we're all so upset and worried. So in goal, I have Ariola, Pedro Poro again, not the greatest fixture. Gabriel, Taylor most likely won't start tonight versus uh, Luton. Friday night deadline, guys. Wang out, Asia Cup, Son out, Asia Cup, Watkins, Solanke against Liverpool. Could get a goal. Hopefully he starts. Several rumors are about a niggle, but hopefully he starts, uh, uh, starts the game, right? Uh, we don't have that much information available. I think it was just a rumor and hopefully it stays that way. Uh, they ideally do play though next weekend. So this game week is split over two weekends. Again, very frustrating. Five matches over this game week, uh, over this weekend, and five more matches over the next weekend going into Monday night. So Liverpool do play next week. So we know from that that Trent is 100% out at least um, against Bournemouth. Is he also out against uh, Chelsea? Could be, but mostly it should be back against Arsenal. So that's probably two games. All this is the information we're still waiting more accuracy about, right? Um, so yeah, Solanke there versus Liverpool. So he should be fine. Like I was talking about the rumors about a niggle, but I don't think anything will materialize. So he should be okay. Archer against West Ham. They have a new signing, a player who plays more like a forward from Villarreal. And McBurney, does he start? I could potentially, so I could be down to just uh, two free transfers. Let's say Son Wang out, right? So that's two. Ariola three, Gabriel, Pedro Poro, four, five, Palmer, six, Saka, seven, Watkins, eight, Solanke, nine. I could be down to nine players despite taking two free transfers. Even if I do take a hit over here, uh, leave Taylor on my bench, get, somebody, get somebody in for Trent or Salah, I could still be playing only with 10 players. Minus four and only 10 players, minus eight, everyone plays. Do I want to take a minus eight? I'll tell you why I don't like wildcarding this week. I don't even know if I'm with minus eight, I want to take Salah out and Trent out. Um, Salah comes back, let's say game week 25, 26. You definitely want Trent to come back into your team when he's starting. Can get you points against Chelsea and Arsenal as well. Uh, very interesting, interesting, uh, you know, dilemma for me over there and dilemma for every, every, uh, manager here. It's not something that um, can take for granted so easy that it's a easy minus eight or easy on the wild card. I mean, if you were wild carding, I would definitely say take Salah and Trent out technically because then a wild card would be absolutely wasted, right? Uh, not maximizing it right now. But that's what doing that is not making me very easy. So, which is why I'll hold off on the wild card 90%, 95%. 
I always say that 5% dot because sometimes closer to deadline, you do not know what is going to happen. Okay. So yeah, these are all the dilemmas that we have. So even if I take a minus eight, then I have a potential starting 11 there from which I think I would still keep, I don't know what I keep trying to make. Will I be Salah one week? It depends on what players do you want? What players are the ones you go for, right? So we'll move on to the transfer page and see what are the viable players this week. Um, it's worth to note before we look at that, that what the confusion about is if you haven't already seen it, if you are not on Twitter very active, there could be potential double game week in game week 25 because 26 could be a blank game week where uh, Chelsea and Liverpool, if they go through in the Carabao Cup final, they will be missing that game. Uh, which also means that Spurs will blank because that's the fixture between Liverpool, uh, between Chelsea and Spurs, which is supposed to be that fixture, family fixture that weekend. Liverpool also was a Luton will miss out, but that could become a double game week in 25. Uh, so you could have these chop and changes happening around there, which is why I feel like just more information about player availability will help one more week. Like I said, worth to note, game week 21 goes on for two game weeks over 11 days almost. And then game week 22 deadline is that following weekend after the FA Cup fixture where you could also potentially, hopefully not have injuries, but very likely could have injuries there as well, right? So ideally, if you do want to wildcard, probably even wait till 22, take a hit this week. Not because everybody else is taking a hit, I think that's just the right thing to do, but that's my opinion, right? So like I said, minus four, a lot of confusion, still not playing 11. What do you do? Do you play with 10? Do you take a minus eight? Ah, uh, that's, I'm not sure yet. And it's very close to deadline already. This episode will probably go up, you know, four hours before deadline, because I don't want to give too much room to double doubt or make you think more than you're already overthinking this. So yeah, like I said, this is what my team is. Two free transfers. Uh, Taylor most likely won't start, but I don't think taking him out is the right move, right? Let's say the most potentially obvious move, Son will leave my team. I can get in Foden here, obviously. City will also most likely double in 26 from what we hear as of 25 as of now. Newcastle, Burnley, Brentford, Everton, Chelsea. Good run of fixtures, Bournemouth, right? So good run of fixtures in general, if you want to look at it. One more free transfer, right? So what do I do? I show you my team. Do I take out Wang this week? Do I take out Wang and Salah? I mean, both are not going to be playing. Do I look at Trent? Let's say I take out Trent. I think the obvious move is going to be Estupinian or for me, Walker. Estupinian at 5. So that's 9.8 over here. Let's say I go ahead with this like I showed you earlier. My starting lineup would be Ariola, Gabriel, Estupinian and Pedro Poro. That's three defenders. Saka, Palmer, Foden as of now. That's three attackers. That's six players. And Archer, Watkins and Solanke. And just relying on Archer to get me points, right? So that's nine outfielders with the keeper without taking a hit. And from that, I'm still going to mostly play Archer. Now, obviously, if Taylor was fit, Taylor comes in here. Even though it's not a great week, I would just take Taylor on Archer and play the 11, right? And figure it out. Definitely not... Um, take out uh, Salah or Wang here. But I feel if I'm taking a minus four, could I potentially let Trent stay here? Take out LaSalle, who's anyway going to be a pain point. Okay. So that's 5.5. Now Wang can go two ways. I can go to Neto, who is fit now, who will be taking, coming into the team with Wang gone. Brighton, United, Chelsea. United at home, still a good game against this United team, which does not look the greatest yet in defense. Chelsea away, again, potentially could do well. Brentford, yes, can do well here. Uh, good run of fixtures. Neto could be one move here. Now, the problem with, like I said, is if I'm taking a minus four, let's say we now, the whole point of doing this is, do I want Haaland back next week, right? If I don't take Trent out, uh, do I have an easy way to get Haaland in next week? If I take out Solanke, nope, 12.5. I'll take a minus four next week as well. Watkins to Haaland is the only tight move with 0 0.2 left in the bank. By then, he could obviously go up to 14, right? So it could be just 0.1 left in the bank. And I don't want to take out Watkins yet. That's the reason why I don't know if this is something I would look at. There's also the option of, let's say, Doty against Burnley. Should be a decent fixture, 6.1 in the bank. Do I take out Solanke? 13 in the bank. Still not enough, despite taking a minus 4, to get in Haaland next week without taking another hit. In which case, that's a confusion, right? Uh, let's say you get rid of Trent Alexander-Arnold. I get rid of Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's back for Chelsea. 
now you're without Trent. Haaland might start, but your defense kind of looks like this. I see myself taking a minus four potentially next week anyway. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Um, and I'd rather hold on to Trent and Salah to make this double better be better about which minus four or what kind of play adjustment do I want to do for that minus four, right? Uh, eventually, let's say, for example, you want to move out your Spurs players, right? They could also double maybe in 25. We don't know. Uh, Brentford, Everton, Brighton, Wolves, it's a good run of fixtures at 25. You could get a return against United as well, obviously. I mean, let's say Chelsea is a good game too. Uh, it's a good run of fixtures, I think, till 29. Uh, and I don't know, like I said, then is when you probably look at getting them out, I think. Newcastle. So, taking your Spurs player out, your Pedro Poro out, ideally, is also not the best fixture. So, you feel like I'm a little caught or boxed in here right now in terms of what you can do, right? I potentially basically feel here that you don't have the option of going Trent, Salah and Haaland in your team. I don't think that's going to be possible, which is where the main confusion comes from. So, like I said, minus four. I have Dotty, Poro, Gabriel. Am I happy with that team? Eh. Saka, Foden, Neto, Palmer. Watkins, Solanke, Archer. Now let's say I don't take Neto in and Garnacho is the new enabler of what Palmer was uh, about a month back. Mostly starts United. I'm really not sure about the points though, right? Done decent in the last two games, but he is a little... I feel he's a little underdeveloped yet in terms of that finesse. So, will he be rotated out? Could potentially be it's Spurs, Bulls, West Ham, Villa, Luton, Fulham. Great game. So we get, let's say, Garnacho in here now. I have Garnacho and Dotti. Can I now take out Solanke and get in Haaland? Nope, still 0.1 shot. It's it's very frustrating the way this injury has happened because it kind of takes away a lot of uh, maneuverability you wanted with your team. Um, in that case, which is why I said that even though LaSalle someone was not starting and I'm looking at next week, I might just make uh, take Trent out because in my case, even though I want to hold on to him very desperately and I will want him back because just you know he's going to do well. Let's say if I can't get him back till Arsenal, he is going to do well against these teams. So there is a no-brainer there. It's going to be a struggle to get Trent back. But let's say I do that. I'll leave this here. I'll get in Dotty here. Again, that saves money in the bank. I get Haaland in next week. Don't have to take another minus four. Um, Luton play. Yeah, sorry. Luton play Brighton at home next week. Brighton have conceded a lot of sloppy goals. They score. Could be a good end-to-end -end game over there as well. This is somewhat satisfactory. Saka, Palmer, Foden, Garnacho, enabling player. Watkins, Solanke, Archer. Like I said, I'm reading it out loud. You can see my face. It's not the most ideal move, but... Options are very limited. Like I said, the other option is just going. Walker is at about, I think. Walker someone you get in and keep because he's going to double as well before 26. Potentially, you already have Walker, Foden and Haaland. Then your triple lined up for the double game week. When you get Haaland in 22. I am not too averse to take a minus four anyway next week. But like I was showing you that it has to kind of make sense, right? Um, But yeah, this is where I am currently at, right? And... Yeah, like I said, this is what it kind of looks like. Otherwise, it's not the easiest move over here. So yeah, just to recap over there, if I don't take any hits, I'm going in with only 10 players. I have enough money in the bank to get in Haaland, right? But I'm only then playing with Gabriel and Pedro Poro. Two defenders, keeper, Ariola, Saka, Pama, Ford, and Garnacho, or Neto, Archer, Watkins, and Solanke. Two free transfers, 10 players, minus four, fill in the team of sort. Uh, minus eight, get a balanced team. But are these the players I even want taking the hit, right? Are these players going to make up for the minus eight? I mean, potentially, yes, because I'm getting them in for players who will get zero points, right? Normally, you say the player starts to get at least two points over there. But these are the doubts right now. I think if I look at it objectively, really looking at it, I think Estupinian is a good pick. I think Walker is a good pick and Dotty is a good pick. I think those three are good, solid picks there in defense. In midfield, I think it's Phil Foden, Neto. Bowen was the greatest pick, obviously, but he's out for maybe one or two game weeks. So if you have him and your team looks good, keep him. If not, that minus four is really tricky for you there in case he starts. Because if I'm not mistaken, West Ham play next weekend, right? 
yes, they don't play this weekend. In the same gimmick, they play next weekend. Potentially could come off the bench as well if he's recovered quickly. So I think maybe I would just hold on to him and just take that chance. Hmm. But yeah, these are what my thoughts are. Not an easy, easy time at all. Uh, deciding what to do. You could also, like I said, uh, be puntish, right? If you don't think Archer is a good move. Like I said, if I'm going all out and I'm saying, let's say I'm going to take a minus eight. I would just do Trent to S2 B Nian. And I think Archer is not going to do well. I can just get in Pedro here as well. I can get in Pedro here as well, right? 9.8. I'll land in just for Solanke next week. I have players who are starting, not to worry. Sala Taylor can be on my bench with Lascelles. Again, I'll have just above 11 to start, but 11 who will most likely start, right? Uh, if not, we can even look at how Ivan Tony is doing. But look, realistically, apart from Nottingham Forest, the fixtures are not too great. It's Spurs, City, Wolves, Liverpool, West Ham, Arsenal and Chelsea. Before that, Tony does do well against... Usually, I remember the City game last season. He's done well against teams before, but... Just coming back, 7.9 is an investment in a player. So, which is why I'm a little shy of going for Tony. But just trying to give you options that if you're taking hits, make the hits count and try to make a very attacking team where you get your points back at least, right? So then a Tony, Watkins, Solanke, Saka, Palmer, Foden, Garnacho, Gabriel, Estepin, and Pedro Poro, and Ariola would be your team. 7.3 left in the bank and get in Haaland next week for a hit, uh, for without a hit in a free transfer. If he is fit, um... And like I said, if you want to defer it, take the minus four next week, spread up the minus eight over two weeks. Maybe then take out Salah and get in Haaland. We'll have more money in the bank to work with. You could make a better move there. More informed hit over there, in fact. But yeah, I feel if you have already folded in Alvarez in your team this week from last week, you made a big gain by making those moves last week, which I didn't because I didn't anticipate so much chaos. And yes, I think if already having Trippier, even though they play City, having Foden, Gordon, Alvarez this week, is taking you a step ahead, so congratulations there. So yeah, I didn't speak too much about a wildcard team because I'm not really sure, like I said, what you would wildcard like. But I think this is what a wildcard team would look like uh, potentially. Dubrovka, Ariola, Gabriel, Branthwaite, Walker, Estupina, and Pedro Poro. One of these could be Virgil van Dijk could be to get in that Liverpool defence, right? Saka, Foden, Palmer, Richarlison, Jota. Watkins, Solanke, and I've got Haaland in right now because I feel Haaland will be fit in 22 or 23 as of now what we have. You could not make that move, obviously, and not save a transfer in 22. You could get in Darwin here. You could get in Alvarez here, but then Alvarez, I feel, becomes a problem in the future. Or you could keep Alvarez and do... Um, Alvarez comes in over here. You do Solanke to maybe you know, Haaland in the future. That is potentially a move as well. You'll have money left in the bank potentially because there's no Salah, there's no Trent here. Enough money here. You could also, let's say, potentially going ahead. I mean, Pedro Poro is good. I don't think you can do Trippier here in this team and go for Haaland. It'll be very tricky. And I think it'll be up to much money parked on the bench. But potentially, you could do wildcard, something like this. We know City have decent fixtures. Palmer has decent fixtures. Still game week 23. Uh, Liverpool could get attacking returns against them, right? With Salah still not coming back, Trent potentially still injured. Uh, no endo, no fixed left back. You could have potentially attacking targets there. Wolves could be a tough game, but like I said, there's potential here till Crystal Palace, is my opinion. Saka obviously stays there. Jota could be that player coming in differentially. If you don't want to do Darwin and Jota, you have Alvarez here. If you get Darwin in here, this could, like I said, be Neto, could be Bowen, put Bowen on your bench. Uh, you have enough in defense to start and change your formation to, uh, you know, a 3-4-3. lot of maneuverability over here. But again, while this team is looking good, I, I can't really complain about this team. Haaland, let's say Haaland comes in here. I have money in the bank. I want to get Salah back in over here. Right? I have 2.9 left in the bank, obviously. Like I said, let's just make this Darwin. Can't have too many City players. The Haaland comes in here. Do I have enough money in the bank to go for Salah again? No, can't get in Salah without 
maneuverabling too much maneuvering too much in this which is why i potentially feel a wild card is not worth it but uh you know there you have it in terms of what i think could be a decent draft for this game week thank you so much again for tuning into this episode it's about 20 minutes i know it went a little long so i apologize for that uh try to keep these under 20 now best of luck for this game week it's going to be a crazy one whatever you decide it is okay even if you slip rank which i assume i will maybe go to 200k hopefully i just about hold rank uh if you've gotten ahead of the most congratulations like i said fpl sometimes is a game of skill and luck combined and uh thank you for tuning into this episode if you haven't subscribed if you liked it you can if you don't that's fine uh leave a like again if you like the episode see you in game week 22 when the pandemonium hopefully has reduced cheers